Okay, storyline one, searching for life, right? What makes life on this planet and how does that affect our search for life on other planets? So lesson seven is, is water a salt? This is the second day. Okay, for today's lesson, you need two note sheets. So if you don't have these, go get them. All right. In the last class, we looked at models for the bonding in water. So what do you remember? Okay, we learned that water has covalent bonds. So there are two types of bondings that we've looked at so far. In ionic bonds, like in salts, electrons are transferred. One atom ends up with a positive charge as a cation because it gives up an electron or more than one, and another atom ends up as an anion because it gains one or more electrons. So electrons get transferred from one atom to another. And then in covalent bonds, like we looked at with water, electrons are shared between them. So we fill our valence shell by sharing instead of transferring. Okay, so now let's review subatomic particles. What do you know about subatomic particles? So subatomic particles, remember, that means inside atoms. So what do you remember? Okay, so there are three types of subatomic particles. We have protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are in the center, called the nucleus of the atom. Electrons are outside the nucleus in energy levels. Remember when we looked at the Bohr models? Electrons have a negative charge. Protons have a positive charge, and neutrons have a neutral charge. So if all protons are positive and all electrons are negative, how do they interact? Well, electrons would be attracted to the protons, right? So if electrons would be attracted to the protons in the nucleus of the same atom, so if I have one atom of hydrogen, the electron would be attracted to the proton in the nucleus of that atom. Do you think those electrons could be attracted to other positive charges? Like could they be attracted to other ions or could they be attracted to protons in the nucleus of other atoms? What do you think? And if positive and negative charges attract, right, do those charges need to be close together or far apart? We talked about this before, so what do you remember? These concepts can help explain covalent bonding. Electrons can be shared. Why? Because electrons can literally be attracted to the protons of two atoms that are very close. So when they get close enough to bond, those electrons can be shared. So this is what happens in covalent bonding. Electrons are shared to fill those energy levels. The electrons are not transferred. There are no ions form. Ions form in salts with ionic bonding. In covalent bonding, since the electrons are shared, there are no ions form, okay? So now looking at our note sheet. So let's go through some of the vocabulary that's gonna be important moving forward. So an ion is a charged atom or group of atoms. A cation, remember cations are positive. Uh, so cations have a positive charge and cations are metals, okay? Anions are ions with a negative charge, so remember, a negative ion, and those are non-metals, okay? Atoms, you should remember, are neutral, okay? So if you look at this um, illustration right here, you can see a neutral atom with the same number of protons and electrons. If it formed an anion, you can see that in order to be the same element, it has to have the same number of protons, but because it's negative, it has more electrons. And then if it formed a cation, again, to be the same element, it has to have the same number of protons. But in order to be negative, uh, in order to be positive, it would have to have less electrons, okay? 
All right, so here looking at bonding. So in an ionic bond, electrons are transferred from one to the other. In a covalent bond, electrons are shared. Okay. And just for some regions vocabulary, ionic compounds means salts. So salts are things that form with ionic bonding. There's an attraction between a cation and an anion. And covalent compounds are also called molecular compounds. So that is important for a region's language because sometimes they say in this covalent compound or they could say in this molecular compound. And for that, you need to understand that they mean the same thing. All right, so we're still looking at our notes and under here, we're going to draw something, okay? So we're going to start by drawing some ions to represent NaCl, okay? Now the Na should be positive, and in this case for relative size, sodium is smaller and um, the chloride ion is larger. I just drew three sets because each NaCl needs one Na and one Cl. Okay, so I went through and just do, drew three of them. You could draw more if you wanted, but you need to follow the same pattern. So notice it's a negative and the positive is next to it. And then going below, right, it's still going to be um, a positive below the negative and so on. Okay, but drawing just this many is as much as you need to do. But now let's add lines to show the attraction because this chloride right here is attracted to this sodium, but it's also attracted to this sodium. And in reality, there's another sodium over here that it's attracted to and another sodium over here that it's attracted to, right? And so every positive is going to be attracted to all the negatives around it. And all the negatives are gonna be attracted to all the positives around it. All right, now in the next box, we're gonna draw some water molecules, okay? So this is the bent shape. This shows the word bond, which you do not necessarily need to add into your illustration, but just showing the oxygen bonded to two hydrogens. Uh, if you label it on one, that is probably sufficient. You don't need to label it on each one, okay? So now look at the melting and boiling points. So these values down here for both NaCl and water. So look at the boiling and melting points of NaCl. Now look at those of water. So do you think water is going to have the same kinds of attraction that NaCl has? All right, so NaCl is ionic bonding. Water is covalent bonding. So how does this difference help explain why NaCl is a solid at room temperature and water is a liquid at room temperature? What do you think? All right, let me help explain. Ions attract each other very strongly, positives and negatives strong attraction. NaCl is made of ions. The ions attract each other very strongly. Water is not made of ions. So that means the molecules in water are not as strongly attracted to each other as the ions in salts. And then in order to melt, to go from a solid to a liquid, ions or molecules need to separate. And since ionic bonds are so much stronger, they're that much harder to separate. So let's look at a simulation to try to help make sense of this. All right, so here's the first simulation, okay? And when I have strong attractions, you can see how those particles are very close together. And as I loosen the attraction between the atoms, you can see they're able to start dispersing. So that means it would be a solid melting and then a liquid evaporating, okay? And here, let's look at it another way, but this time there are lines showing those attractions. And as I lessen the attractive forces between the atoms, some of those um, attractive forces get broken, 
Okay, and so then eventually the solid starts to melt because the particles are able to move a little more. And then eventually the liquid becomes a gas because the particles are able to move even more because we're breaking, we're pulling apart uh, those atoms. So how do the differences in ionic and covalent bonding help explain why NaCl is a solid at room temperature, but H2O is a liquid. All right, you should answer this question. All right, we looked at sugar, acetone, and mineral oil in other lessons. Do you think any of those are salts? Okay, but before you answer this question in your notes, I'm gonna look at a few things. So first, here is the conductivity of distilled water. So you can see the value on the conductivity meter, okay? And you could see the visual test using uh, this circuit where if the uh, distilled water is a conductor, we would see the light bulb illuminate, okay? Now let's look at the conductivity of distilled water with sugar, okay? Because this is something we talked about that we didn't quite test this one. So that is distilled water with sugar. And now let's test it with the circuit. Again, if the liquid is conducting, we should see completion of the circuit and the bulb would illuminate, okay? So you could see the value on the conductivity meter and also the demonstration with the uh, circuit. All right, and now here is the conductivity of distilled water with salt. Okay, and again, testing the same thing. There was the conductivity meter, so you could see the value. And now let's look at the circuit when those uh, the circuit is completed in the uh, water, distilled water with salt. Okay, so now you should be able to answer this question maybe a little bit um, more accurately. So do you think any of those things that we looked at previously, sugar, acetone, mineral, do you think any of them are salts, yes or no? And explain why. So with all the information we've learned so far in this storyline, answer this question. All right, so now it's time for our modeling tracker. So. What did we figure out? Because remember our lesson seven question was, is water a salt? So what did we figure out? Water is definitely not a salt. Water has covalent bonds and covalent bonds are not as strong as ionic bonds because ionic bonds have that positive negative attraction and covalent bonds do not, okay? All right, now, uh, here are some ideas to get you started on your models. So include some other ideas from today's lesson or other lessons. Think about what does life need on Earth and what would we be looking for on other planets? Okay, so again, here are some ideas to get you started. That is not all you should have in your modeling tracker. All right, and then in order to complete this, you're going to submit this the modeling tracker to Schoology. So find this assignment, that's the one you're looking for, and submit it, okay? And this is the end of lesson seven.